Hello Internet, Big Dave here and I am cheap. How cheap? Well, I'm so cheap that I'm not willing to pay anything for G-Shift. Well, at least not yet. So you're looking at the screen here, you're seeing a slightly unfamiliar interface. What I would like to introduce to you is a brand new series here on Big Dave is Cheap. It is called Try It Before You Buy It, or Try It for short. So here's the deal. This game is on sale for $5. I'm a little iffy about whether or not I should purchase it. It has a demo. I'm going to play the demo live for you guys, and then I am going to decide whether or not to buy G-Shift. A little bit about G-Shift. It bills itself as a first-person 2.5D puzzle platformer with about 15 hours of gameplay, as I'm just reading this right off the webpage, as if you guys can't see it. But uh, really quickly, the summary reads, just in case you can't see it. When a horrible accident unleashes waves of gravitational force across the planet, it cracks the crust and sends floating land masses into the air. Guster, the son of the man responsible, is charged with the task of settling... Settling? Of setting things right. I had it right there till the end, you know. I'm going to have to really brush up if I want to get my, uh, my big cool announcer guy job. Which I don't want, by the way. So, uh, yeah, anyway, G-Shift. Collect gravity bubbles, yada, yada, yada. It looks interesting. I really, really like the art style. It looks fan-freaking-tastic. So we are going to jump into the game and take a look at it. I have not played this game, not one little bit. So here we go. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Before we go... How silly of me, I forgot to tell you about what you're looking at here. This is Desura. Desura? Desura. D-E-S-U-R-A. It is a Steam-esque download, digital, digital download platform, and it has a focus on indie games and in-development games. Very cool stuff. Um, I've been toying around with it for a while, checking it for gaming deals, that sort of thing, but I had never actually... Uh, signed up. Finally signed up today and G-Shift is the first game that I have added. Works very much like Steam. We have the play button up here at the top. That shows all your games. If you purchase the Humble Indie Bundle, number three, you have codes to add all of these games into Desura. Pretty cool. There is G-Shift. Yeah. There we go. Why does it say not ready? Hmm. Well, we'll solve that. Let's go ahead and actually get into the game now for reals and uh, I will see you guys there. All right. All right, guys, welcome to G Shift. Taking a look. That damn thing always goes off when I least want it to. Anyway, texty, texty. Guys, we are taking a look at G Shift, and I have to apologize because just prior to this, I lied to you guys. Well, not on purpose, and then it wasn't a lie, but now it is. Uh, anyway, I'm having some difficulty with Fraps. Fraps is not my friend right now. I already played this game, I already did a video for this game, and I already didn't get a video because for some reason it recorded the desktop. <sighs> yeah, so I am going to attempt to do this video again, but it will not be from the first impression uh, point of view that I had hoped it would be. So let's take a look here, let's move into the game itself. I'm not going to go to the options menu because the first time when I went to the options menu, it crashed the game, and I think that's what caused my problems with fra fraps. Um, everything is probably okay in the options menu. Game appears to be full screen. I like the, li the little interface here. Oh, battery meter, signal meter, obviously some sort of a fancy uh, phone. What do you guys call those? Smartphones, you kids with the, with the phones? All right, let's go. The tutorial, we shall... Well, I've been through the tutorial, but it is informative. So let us go. So G-Shift, again, it, it uh, bills itself as a first-person 2.5D platformer. First problem, I don't see any first-person. Second problem, I have I don't see a half-D. Um, yeah. Okay, so let me make some noise into the microphone here for just a minute because I forgot to do something. This game actually requires that you use both of your hands. Uh, one on your standard WASD for navigation, the other one firmly fixed onto the uh, number or the uh, the number pad wherever you want. The arrows that are on your number pad, the arrows that are in your your cluster of uh, directional keys, 
or alternatively, you can use IJKL. So anyway, you need two hands on directional controls is what I'm trying to say. So let me move my mic aside here and get my hands where they needs to be. Okay, I think that... Scoot my chair up here. I think that we are where we need to be now, so let us proceed. Jumpy, jumpy, jumpy. So this is the mechanic of the game. Uh, my very first thought when seeing that was, man, this reminds me of, and yet it moves. And a lot about this game reminds me of, and yet it moves. Of course, it has a, a vastly different art style. Cool. Um, so I am rotating the level. I, I guess this little thing on my back is like my, my gravity pack. And I suppose I'm using the force of that gravity pack. I am collecting the little shiny baubles the gravity wells or whatever they are in an attempt to get through the level now one thing I'll tell you I've had some difficulty adjusting to the controls here's the little gravity bubble grab that I've had some difficulty adjusting to the controls because sometimes your 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 mind will want to do one thing in order to rotate the level but the game would dictate you do another for instance at first my first instinct is to press the right arrow key to rotate the level for whatever reason. Maybe my brain's just wired oddly. But what you really need to do is press down. There you go. Okay, you know, interesting. It works well enough. There is a small amount of sort of uh, unteaching your brain what your first instinct might be. So this is the mover. It will start this nice little gentleman in motion. And yeah, we have to fall onto that. Now, in this case, we will use the right arrow key because we want to turn the level. Such as that. So we'll ride this for a moment. There's where we want to end up. Of course, because of my fabulous backpack, gravity might as well not exist. Because I can do this sort of stuff. Here we go. You have a limited distance you can fall. You can fall a distance of two squares. Alright, this is, is a spawner. Generate marked by the eight boundary points. Okay. Keep... Uh, okay, I've seen it. Father. Funding was cut when a truck of spawners crashed, and, well, now there's very little... There's a very nice memorial park there. Oh, nice. Uh, indie wit. Okay. So we back. Here we go. Ah, okay, I see, I see. Now how does one get to that? Oh, such as this. So there's a there's a, fa a fair amount of mind bending that goes on with this game in order to get things working uh, and and get yourself moving in the correct direction. It's pretty cool. It's some pretty interesting stuff. Where is this going? Taking me anywhere? I don't know. I'm confused. Oh, I... That's a trap. What? Why would you... It's a... It's training. Why would you put a trap there? Ugh, okay. Well, let's move on. Um, something interesting that I learned is that you, you press this next button. Yeah, you go to the next level. You just leave the tutorial and you just go. Okay. Something else that's quite annoying. This game requires two hands on the keyboard in order to play. But... In a scenario like this, it requires a mouse. Normally, this would not be a problem. For me, it's a bit of a uh, hindrance because I have the microphone. So we will take a quick look at field section one, and then we will give a final thought on this game. Again, we are playing this game, observing this game, trying to determine whether or not I would purchase this game as it is on sale for $5. As always, we are collecting the gravity wells, the gravity bubbles. Sometimes there is a bit of confusion trying to figure out exactly where the next area is, but if you just kind of continuously explore, those questions tend to answer themselves. I'm a lot more comfortable with the keys now. Um, fingers crossed, 
knock on wood, whatever you want to say, I have not yet made a mistake. I have not yet pressed one thing when I meant to press another. Um, I have a feeling, though, now that I've said that, that is about to come to an end. I am using every bit of concentration that my feeble brain has to offer. Ah, and yes, I have made it. I collected the three gravity bubbles, and I have now exited this level. Not too bad. A minute and five seconds, that's actually ten seconds longer than it took me the previous time. For some reason, after I exited this game, the demo uninstalled. I don't know if that was something that was intentional by uh, Desura, or if I clicked something that made the demo uninstall. But, uh, yeah, okay. And again, back to the mouse. Mouse hand. Okay, we'll take a quick and very brief look at this level, because I have not really looked at this level at all. And we will begin to talk about our thoughts on the game. So, so far, this game feels very much like And Yet It Moves. And those of you who watched my Humble Indie Bundle series, you will know that I was charmed by And Yet It Moves, and I really, really enjoyed that game. Thus far, this game is not offering me anything more than I was able to get from And Yet It Moves. For that reason, I may not be inclined to purchase this game. That, in and of itself, a very similar concept to another game, is going to hinder my potential enjoyment of G-Shift. The art style is amazing. I love the character. I love his little Super Saiyan hair. Um, you know, it's a goofy... It's got a goofy sense of humor. It's got all those things going for it that an indie game should have, and that really that an indie game has to have in order to succeed. And, and I think that uh, it's hitting the right spots on a lot of things. But I keep coming back to the fact that I've played this concept before, and I've played it in a more fluid and potentially more well-executed manner with And Yet It Moves. Now, that doesn't necessarily make this game worthless, but it makes it a much tougher sell for me. Yay. In the end, I've, I've enjoyed this game, I've enjoyed this demo. Um, as I say, I have now played this for a couple of, uh, a couple of rounds. Thanks in part to Fraps or more likely to this game crashing, but still, I'm blaming Fraps. So what's the verdict? You know, this is the introductory episode of Try It. Try it before you buy it. I must have missed one. Oh, snap. Okay, there's a little map up in the upper left-hand corner that points me towards the gravity bubble that I must get. That's nice. Uh, at this point, I can't personally justify to myself buying this game. Uh, is it a bad game? Certainly not. It is just so similar to And Yet It Moves, at least from my perspective. But And Yet It Moves does so much more. It, it brings in the actual effects of gravity. It brings in uh, being able to spin the level while you're moving. Momentum. All this sort of stuff that this game just lacks. I think this is a very promising game. I think you should check it out. I think you should check out Desura. That's D-E-S-U-R-A. Check it out. Download the client if you're so inclined. I am on there as Big Dave is cheap, just like my Twitter, just like my Steam. Will I be purchasing G-Shift? I think the answer is no. I think the game is good. I think it would probably be worth the $5 I would spend on it, but I have more time that I'd like to spend with And Yet It Moves. Maybe if I complete And Yet It Moves, I would come back and I would consider G-Shift if it was still on sale. As of right now, though, the verdict on this first episode of Try It for G-Shift is... No, thank you. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed this episode, a little bit of a departure from the things that we normally do here on the channel, not just buying $5 games, but actually being frugal about buying $5 games, trying them before we buy them. I have been Big Dave, and until next time, guys, take it easy. <laughs>